This is section 9-4, we're going to be graphing sine and cosine functions. So we're going to identify the different parent graphs for sine and cosine, and we're going to understand the amplitude of trig graphs. So when we graph sine and cosine, and even tangent, but we're not going to talk about tangent today, we're going to kind of punt that forward a little bit. Essentially what we're doing is we're converting the unit circle into a function. And so my x values become my input, or the input, which are the radians, Right? I mean, technically you can do it in degrees, but we're just going to focus on radians. And then the output is the ratio that's on the unit circle. So for example, let's just say this, this model is my, my sine of x function, and I kind of have a quick graph for you right here. This is going around the entire unit circle. But essentially, when you plug in 0, if I said 0 radians, if you look at your unit circle at 0 radians on sine, it's 0 at pi 6 radians. If you look at your unit circle, my sine is 1 half. At pi 4, it's radical 2 over 2. At pi thirds, it's radical 3 over 2. And pi halves, it's 1. Now, we can graph this. Now, the weird part is we're basically converting our number line. Instead of counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we're now breaking it up into these pi radians, right? And so in this instance, if I break, break this up into pi halves, over here, you know, this is where about pi six is, right in the middle is where pi fourths is, pi thirds is about right here. But we can actually go through and we can plot every single point that's going to be on here. So at pi six, it's one half. At pi halves, it's one. And as we go through the entire unit circle, we're able to go through and plot that. Now it's a little exhaustive, and if we were to do every single value to out, for our output, it takes us a long time. And so there's actually uh, not necessarily a shortcut, but an easier way to visualize this to help us graph. But I still wanted to start this off so that we at least know where it's coming from. All these values come straight from the unit circle. Your input's the radian, the output is what the ratio is. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the poles. We're going to look at 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and back at 2 pi. And we're going to use those values to kind of help us out. So for example, let's focus on cosine. When I, uh, at 0 radians, my cosine is 1. Let me write those out for you guys. So at 0 radians, my cosine is 1. At pi halves, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. At 3 pi halves, it's 0, right? This is my input. I'm plugging in. This is my x value, 3 pi halves, right? Here's my x value. My output, or my y value, is 0. And then I'm plugging in pi, 2 pi, so I get 1. Now I can do that for negative rotation, too. So if I plug in negative pi halves, that means I get 0. If I plug in negative pi, I get negative 1. If I plug in negative 3 pi halves, right, that's 3 pi halves, negative 3 pi halves, you get 0. And if you plug in negative 2 pi, you're going to get back to 1. And then once we have those poles, then we can draw our ske sketch through it just knowing it has that curvature. Now, if we were going to have the parent graph memorized. The parent graph is basically from here to here. And so I have that for you. Those are the important values that we need. If you remember, uh, memorize what 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi is, those being the important values, you're going to see how all we're going to be able to do is just manipulate these and we can graph any cosine function. That's what we want to get to. So we need to memorize this picture. So it starts here. So imagine this is all gone, right? I just wanted to show you the bigger picture. But if you can imagine this image, this image is what gives me cosine. And then these being the important values that associate with it, we can graph any cosine. Same thing for sine. I'm going to go a little quicker on this one. All we're doing is we're just plugging in the values. So just to talk about a couple of them, at 0, right, at 0 rotation, my sine value is 0. At pi halves, my sine value is 1. At pi, my sine value is 0. So that's where I get these. 
and it follows that pattern. Now it's very similar, it's just the starting point is different. Okay, the starting point is different. And so these have the same important values. So if I were to say, hey, here's the parent graph that you should memorize, if you would chop that off and this is all gone, this is what we need to memorize is that part right there. Starting here and finishing to here. We call that one cycle or one rotation. Now here's some of the properties for it. Uh, cosine functions are even. Sine functions are odd. Uh, these are just the parent graphs, so the domain is negative infinity, positive infinity, so they go on forever both sides. But if you noticed, it didn't go below negative 1 and didn't go above 1. Continuous and smooth, if we go back to that, there's no sharp edges. And we say it has a period of 2 pi. Don't worry about that just yet. You can copy that down, but don't worry about that. We're going to talk about what that period means. And so if this is my parent function for cosine, right? This is basically the pattern, it's going on forever this way, it's going on forever that way. We can modify these functions just like we've modified previous functions. So you remember we had the horizontal shift, we had the vertical shift, we had the vertical stretching and shrinking. We had all of those different things. We can still do that to sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Now, we actually name it. We just don't call it a vertical stretching or shrinking, what we actually do is we call it the amplitude. And so the amplitude, any number that's in front of our function being multiplied, okay, that being the amplitude, what it's going to do is it's going to stretch or shrink my function by whatever that factor is. So if you imagine it's normally starting at 1 for cosine, because now there's this 5 here, it's now going to be stretched all the way to 5. So instead of being from negative 1 to positive 1 in my range, it is now negative 5 to positive 5. So what I want you to think the amplitude is, is the distance from my center line to the highest point on the graph. So here the distance from the center line to the highest point was 1, so that's why on cosine of theta, there's a 1 in front of there. We don't write the 1, but it's there. Or on this side, the distance between the center line to the amplitude, that was 5, and so that's why my amplitude is 5. Now here's a trick question. Amplitude can never be negative. So if I say negative 5 cosine theta, that negative means there's a reflection, and we're going to talk about that later. Let's not focus on that now but my amplitude is still 5. Okay, my amplitude is still 5. I might trick you guys that on a test. I might ask you, what's the amplitude of this? And I might say negative 2 sine of 10, or sine of theta. Well, I don't want you to say the amplitude is negative 2. The amplitude is just positive 2. And so the amplitude is the distance from the center line to the maximum or minimum value. Okay, the amplitude is always positive. So let's take a look at here. We know that our amplitude is 4. With the parent graph here, when we sketch it, here's those important values. There's 0. Here's 0, pi halves. So we go up to 4. And we're going to go down 4. We're going to cross. We're going to go below, and it's going to be back. And each of those pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, 2 pi. And we can go through. And we can draw that sketch of that graph. So the amplitude here, this should be 6. Now the sketch of the graph, remember it's just the same as that cosine parent graph. We just stretched it to 6 instead. But the way that we should think about it is it starts, crosses, goes below, crosses, goes back up. That's the image there, and these are always right for right now are going to be 0, pi halves, 3 pi halves, sorry, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. Right? These are the x values. So for this one right here, my amplitude is 1 half, so that is a vertical shrink. And so just looking at the graph here, So what is my amplitude here? It says negative 5 sine theta. 
I'm hoping you guys said positive 5. The ref negative means it's a reflection. So normally, the graph did this. But because of that negative, that's why everything reflected downward when we went through and do the sketch. But we're going to talk about this more in class, so no worries. So what did we learn today? Well, we talked about graphing sine and cosine functions. We're going to create the parent graphs together in class, so no worries there. That should help and fix some of the understanding. So what is the parent graph for sine? So the parent graph, so 0, I said that these are the important values, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. And so I'll, I'll just put both of them on here, but just different colors. So the parent graph, if we say that that's 1 and negative 1, starts here, goes up, crosses, goes below, goes back. And so that is the parent graph for sine. And then for cosine, I'll make it green. That starts at the amplitude, then crosses, then goes below, then crosses, and then goes back up. And so that's the parent graph for cosine. And then what is the amplitude? Amplitude is the vertical stretching or shrinking of my graph. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.